Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at some upgrades for the Dell Precision M3800. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at doing some upgrades on the Dell Precision M3800. This is a slightly older laptop now, but certainly you can pick them up on eBay and other places for extremely good prices, and actually, in their default configuration, quite often they're actually okay, but these did actually release with either four or eight gigs of RAM, which realistically these days with Windows 10 and Windows 11 probably isn't quite enough, so doubling up the RAM to 16 gigs is well worth doing. Also storage wise, because these were predominantly using either older hard disk drives or using M SATA drives, which uh, can be quite expensive and also generally are quite small capacity, you might wanna upgrade those as well. So we'll take a look today at how to actually take the unit apart and gain access to those components. There will be some things that you possibly might need when you're doing this, uh, one of which is gonna be a Torx T5 screwdriver set or screwdriver bit. So that is for the actual removing the outer frame. And you'll also need a PH00 head screwdriver. And that is gonna to be to remove two of the screws underneath and also to remove things like the M SATA drive should you wish to. Obviously, if you want to go a little bit deeper and take other things out, such as the CPU cooler, etc., then the PH00 screwdriver should be absolutely fine for that, but you may need a full set just to be on the safe side. Also, obviously, if you want to, get yourself some kind of anti-static setup, some sort of strap, and also, ideally, a microfiber cloth or something just to actually put underneath the laptop when you've got it flipped upside down. Other than that, that's it, and you're pretty much ready to go. So let's get on with it. So the first thing obviously is to make sure the unit is completely powered down. So just go over to your Windows desktop, click on shut down. Shut down the system entirely. And remove the power jack. So now we've got our unit, we've got it upside down on a microfiber cloth to protect the top side. So now we just need to remove a whole bunch of screws. Now this is where the Torx T5 bit comes in handy. So I'll point out all the screw locations and we'll circle them in red so you can see them a little bit better. So you've got one here, one here, one here, there, 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 and you've got the two at the back there. So those are the ones with the T5 head. Also underneath this flap where it says the model number, there is also two more screws, and these are using the PH00 head. So first of all, before we start this, obviously, potentially you can damage things in here if you're not entirely sure what you're doing. So if you're not sure, stop, take it to a local store or to a friend and get them to do it for you. Potentially you can damage things in here because there are a lot of exposed components, but if you're happy, carry on. And obviously if you're doing things like maybe changing out your hard drive or SSD, then make sure you've got a backup just in case anything should go wrong. So with that said, let's start taking it apart. So we're going to use our powered screwdriver here just to make things slightly quicker. At this point as well, it might be worth having a parts tray just to put all the small parts in just so they don't go all over the place when you take the lid off. This particular screwdriver doesn't actually have a magnetic head. So we'll be leaving most of the screws actually in place. So with the main screws undone, next we can do the ones in the middle. So again, this is our PH00 screwdriver. These are slightly longer. So that is all the screws undone. So now you should be able to just lift off the unit. and take the tray away and put it to one side. So now we've got access to all the internal components. So let's just point them out so you know what they exactly are. So we've got fan one and two for the cooling system. And in this center section here is your GPU and your CPU. If you wanna get involved in taking that apart and actually cooling that, we will be doing a follow-up video on this. So if you wanna see how that is done and how to apply the thermal paste, 
then click on the subscribe button and the chime icon and you'll be notified of future video releases. Also, they will be listed in the video description below. Other items of note, so our Wi-Fi card is in this top left-hand corner, or at least my top left. Underneath this ribbon strip here is where our mSATA drive is. We've got our main battery. This is our hard drive tray. Normally, if you've got a slightly older version, you may find you've got a two and a half inch drive installed in there already. If you're actually removing the mSATA drive, which is included, and you're maybe going for a slightly cheaper SATA-based SSD, you can put that in here. Very simple to do. There's just four screws in the side and there is a plastic connector there which just plugs into a SATA drive. That is very, very simple to do. RAM is these units here. So if you're not too sure what RAM you've got, you probably want to take this apart to begin with before you actually order your RAM. So all you need to do is with the prongs on the side of each RAM stick, just pop them out on the sides. The RAM will pop up a few degrees and then you can remove it from the slot. If you take one of the RAM chips out, you can actually have a look. Generally, it'll be printed on there exactly what it is. These particular modules are Samsung RAM, which I believe is the original manufacturers, but you can replace it with other brands if you're replacing both sticks. Ideally, if you are replacing the RAM, do it both at the same time. If you're maybe just upgrading because you've got a single eight gig stick and you want to add an eight to it, try and get the same RAM again if you can. If not, just get RAM, which is the same spec. Generally, the RAM in these is DDR3L 1600 CL11. The L is for low power, so don't use normal DDR3 sticks. And it does actually say on the board itself, only support DDR3L. Normally when you're doing this, I would suggest, uh, for if you're not sure or you're a little bit dubious, then you can disconnect the battery from the main board. The main board battery is very easy to do. Just get a flat headed screwdriver and you can remove the connector here. Sometimes actually if you've got pretty long nails, then you can actually just pull it out anyway. So there we go, our battery is now disconnected, so we're not going to get any short circuits or anything like that. So obviously we can take out both our RAM sticks, so we'll do that now. There's one, and there's two, so now obviously the replacement is exactly the same, so get your new RAM sticks, slot them in, and firmly press on both sides and it'll click into position. So that's very simple to do. To gain access to the M SATA drive, it's not obviously completely apparent where it is, but it's actually hidden. So underneath this ribbon connector, there is the MSAS drive. So we've got these two tabs that say pull. So just put your finger slightly under it and lever up slightly and it'll pop out. Same on the other side. So taking away this, this then reveals the MSAS drive. These are normally held in with two crosshead screws, which is PH00 again. So take out your screw or both if you've got both installed. The drive will pop up like most M.2 style drives do. Then you can remove the drive. This drive in here is a Lighton. This is a 512 one. So we're actually going to be keeping this in here, but potentially if you wanted to, you could take that out and swap out with a larger SSD or a larger M.2 drive. Do make sure that you get a M SATA drive. Standard M.2 drives physically won't fit and aren't supported. So it's often cheaper to actually just replace it with a SATA SSD. So putting the drive back in, very simple to do. So if you are putting a new drive in, wiggle the connectors in slightly on a slight angle, and then push the drive down, put the screw back in the top, get your screwdriver, And do it with your first screw. Obviously, if you've got the additional screw, make sure you put the other one as well. Now, some people are a little bit concerned putting the ribbon connector back in. You will notice, actually, on this end of the ribbon connector, there's a little notch. Now, actually, on the ridge by the battery here, there is also another little ridge. So all we want to do is to line up that notch, and then you can push the connector back into place. And then with that in place, that makes this one line up perfectly anyway. So you can just press it and it will lock into position. So that is it, very simple to do. And obviously, to put it all back together is exactly the same, but just in reverse. So all we're gonna to need to do is obviously make sure that you reconnect your battery, put that back in. Yeah, that's all good. Make sure there's no kind of loose wires or anything which could uh, fall out or get damaged. Get your tray, put the tray back on the top. And just press it around the edges. Then get your screwdriver. And obviously it's going to be exactly the same, but in reverse. So we're going to go ahead, do up all the screws.
Once you've done all the ones around the outside edge, then of course you can put the ones back in the middle. And we've still got the screws left in there from when they were in there. So all we need to do is to just tighten those up. And that is it. That is our machine repaired, upgraded, or whatever it is you want to do to it. Again, these at the moment you can pick up for some really good prices. I actually got this one from one of our regular viewers, Dave Aitken, and he actually done me a really good price on it, so that is excellent. And it's actually very good to kind of learn from and to use. Specs on this one, it's an Intel i7-4712HQ. We've also got obviously 16 gigs of RAM in there now, and also we've got that 512 drive. And it also has a Quadro graphics card built in as well with two gigs. So actually a little bit of power in this one, considering you can pick them up for very good money. So anyway, hopefully this video has been useful to it. If it has, don't forget to give a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. You'll see more content like this. We will be doing a follow-up video to actually remove the CPU cooling situation and also how to repaste it and all that kind of good stuff. So I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.